Good morning and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street in Peckville, Pennsylvania, and I am right here with you each and every week at this time on this station to bring you, the landowner, the information you need regarding natural gas development here in Pennsylvania. And so it's abundantly clear to everybody. I, Doug Clark, have not, I do not, and I will not represent gas or pipeline companies. I represent the Pennsylvania landowner, property owner, gas right owner for such things as gas lease negotiations, gas lease reviews, consultations, pipeline agreements, water line agreements, roadways, compressor stations, well pads, unitization issues, breach of lease issues. Shut in. You shut in a very long time. Let's talk. Also, multi-unit well consents. Very hot topic now. Meter sites. Doing more estate planning. Anything. Buying, selling gas rights. Anything related to oil and gas rights in Pennsylvania. Give the office a call. See if we can help you. I always want to stress to people too. I represent property owners, gas right owners who have those rights in Pennsylvania all across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So whether you're in Fayette, I've been getting a lot of calls recently from Fayette County, Washington, Green, Armstrong, my home county, Beaver, Butler, Allegheny, Westmoreland, Westmoreland also, of course, Tioga, getting more calls with, po with Potter County now, Lycoming, all of the central part of the state, and of course, the northeastern part of the state, anywhere where there's gas production or anticipated oil or gas production, I probably have represented clients there and, and most likely have clients in that area at this time. So I just really want to encourage people, don't be afraid of distance. Give us a call, learn what we do, see how we do things. I do all the representation myself. So give us a call. And if it sounds good and it sounds like, hey, maybe you want to start with a review and consultation where you send in your documents. We schedule a phone call if you're far away from the office, but you're always invited to come to the office. And then we do a detailed review of whatever the documents are that you're either asked to be, be signed or asked to sign. Or if you have an issue, you think maybe they breached your lease or your lease is terminated, you have a unitization issue, same thing with pipelines. Again, regardless of the topic, give us a call and see if we can help you. And if we can't, hey, that's okay too. But it, you know, you haven't done anything but made a call and got information, and we're here to help. You know, my goal is to help everybody I can, and I mean that. So give us a call, 570-307-0702. So again, that number is 570-307-0702. Again, encourage you, regardless of your location, as long as the gas rights. Uh, property rights are in Pennsylvania. You hear me say I've represented several people in Canada, Alaska, California, Texas, Micronesia, London, uh, so many different places. So, and, and the other thing too, you know, I just did two leases in the last couple of weeks, lease reviews, these reviews and consultations. One was for between 0.2 and 0.3 acres. So between 0.2 and 0.3 acres. So like one fifth of an acre. And another one was 0.8 acres, so less than an acre. So that's the other thing too. Even if it's an acre, five acres, couple acres, give us a call and see if we can help you. Find out if it's cost effective to do it. Remember, these reviews and consultations that I preach about so much have just been so valuable to people. And so it's a great way to start. Understand your issues, understand your options. And I'm telling you, it almost always takes two hours or less, one to two hours, depending upon how advanced it is. Now, if you have a very complicated issue, it could take a little more time, but generally speaking, most of these reviews and consultations do not take more than two hours, and that includes the review time. So really encourage you, why go into these blind? Why not understand what your options are, what the issues are, what your leverage is? Make sure you're not leaving tens of thousands or even literally hundreds of thousands of dollars on that negotiation table because you didn't understand your leverage. And why didn't you understand your leverage? Well, because you've been listening to the land man who works for the company 
and not you. You're the land owner, the gas right owner. They do not work for you. Do not rely on them to provide you the advice you need to make this extremely important decision for you today, your property, your wife, your spouse, your husband, your children and your grandchildren. Why would you ever rely on the company representative, the company employee, the company independent contractor? Why would you rely on them to educate and help you? It doesn't make sense. If you think about it, it doesn't make sense. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. You know, and along those lines, something just came to me. I heard this week, I was driving my car, and I heard, I was listening to like one of the news stations, and they were talking about uh, companies and the CEOs with the tax cuts and what they're doing with the money. And he said, hey, look, many of these CEOs are buying back stock and they're doing different things to advance the company. And the guy who was talking said, you know, these CEOs have a fiduciary obligation to maximize profits for their shareholders. That's their obligations. So think about that. I've done actually shows on this in the past. Think about that. The company needs to maximize profits. The company is required, duty bound. The management is duty bound to maximize profits. So does that mean give you a very favorable lease? Does that mean calculate royalty payments in a very advantageous way to the landowner? Or does that mean, hey, negotiate, enter into the best possible agreement for the company where we pay the least amount of money possible today. And then in the future, if there are royalty or other payments that are due, that we pay the least possible money to the landowner, to the royalty owner in the future. These are almost just silly questions, but we have to ask them because People are, they're signing these agreements based upon what the land man or company representative tells them. They're saying, well, the guy said, that's all we pay. We're never going to pay any more than that. Gosh. I mean, really think about it. Think about how it went from $25 in Susquehanna to $6,000, $6,000 plus per acre, 12.5% to 21% no deductions. And they started off saying the same thing. This is all we pay. So we got to understand this and we have to ask ask ourselves these questions. Why? Why would we enter into a contract which will almost certainly lasts for many decades, many decades, and potentially a hundred years or more. Why would we do that based solely on our discussions with the other side on complicated, very complex contracts with tons of legalese, tons of loopholes. And if you're talking about royalties, royalty calculation loopholes like crazy, Why am I going to rely on a company who is a multi-billion dollar company who's obligated to maximize profits for the shareholder? Why would I do that? Well, maybe, maybe say, well, you know, I don't know that I need an attorney. Attorneys are expensive. What's this going to be? Again, give us a call for, I can only speak for myself. Give us a call and do a review and consultation or find out about them, you know, call and automatically do one, find out about the service and see if it's right for you. I just, I know it's a broken record and I'm sorry about it, but I just see it nonstop, see it nonstop. And this is great. And this was actually, this was an accidental lead into this, but it's, it's perfect. It is perfect. So last week I talked about the arbitration provision in a Chevron lease. 
and how, and this is a pending lease offer, and there's a bunch of them. I was saying I've been doing more offers. Uh, they're offering in Fayette County. I've been getting calls with Chevron offering leases. So I review the leases, of course, and I do some reviews and consultations like I've been talking about. And again, an hour to two hours they take, and that includes the call or an in-office visit typically. That's usually how long it takes. So I'm talking about you know what these what the trend is that we're seeing and i really focused last week on the arbitration clause and why do i do that well let me explain there is a school of thought i'll put it this way there's a school of thought that well let me back up it's my thought <laughs> arbitrations are bad you don't want to have arbitration as a general rule in your lease or pipeline agreement as a general rule not specific advice to anybody, but generally speaking, get that arbitration the heck out of there if you possibly can. As a general rule, general, general, general. So why do I say that? Well, again, we'll pick the easy one and the high money one, royalty calculation. If you are getting cheated in your mind on royalties and you feel that you have a valid claim against the company, if you have to go to arbitration, which the company wants you to do. I repeat that again. Arbitration is not for you. It's for the company. The company wants you to do it. If they tell you it's for you, in my opinion, now you know the person who is saying that to you is lying in your face. Sorry to say it that way. I don't like to talk that way, but I'm going to tell you, in my opinion, if any land man is telling you that's in there for you or any representative, you say, well, that's great. Take it out. I don't want it and then see if it's really in there for you because sometimes it's a huge battle to get it out. Well, why would it be a battle to get out of arbitration, especially if they say it's in there for you? Well, because of this, because arbitration is expensive, expensive. Generally speaking, there are three arbitrators. You have to pay the bill for one of them entirely and half the bill for another one of the arbitrators. Then you're going to have to pay the filing fees and the cost of arbitration, which in some cases can be five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 just to file a case, depending upon the amount of the controversy. Bottom line. No, and then, by the way, you pay your own lawyer. Very, very expensive. Very expensive. So if you're losing out on, say, a thousand, a couple thousand dollars a year in royalties, you're probably never going to bring an arbitration case because it's too darned expensive. So if a company cheated a thousand, let's say 10,000 people by two or $3,000 a year, knowing then that no one's going to bring an arbitration because it's just too expensive. Well, that's a lot of money that a company can make as a result of having an arbitration provision and using creative royalty calculation methods. Again, opinion, example, not saying that anyone's doing this exactly, but there's that potential. There is that potential. So the other thing, like I talked about, is the arbitration proceedings. If you go in, let's use our example, that a company is cheating 10,000 people out of, we'll say, $3,000 a year in royalties. So a problem is also, if all 10,000 people filed a lawsuit against the company and they all went into arbitration and the first person's case was heard and that person won, the landowner won. Great news. You say, hey, I know about the legal system. That's called precedent. If I win a case or somebody wins a case, that sets a precedent and now that's the law. So if my neighbor won and he was the first person that had a case and the, the arbitration panel said, hey, you're miscalculating these royalties, you're not allowed to take those deductions. You're not allowed to use those affiliated sale numbers. And so I'm ruling as the arbitration panel, we're ruling for the landowner, the royalty owner. Well, unfortunately, that does not set precedent. Arbitration rulings do not set precedent. So... You can win, the first person can win, and the neighbor with the same lease, the same issue, can go to his or her arbitration hearing, and they cannot use the fact that their neighbor won, and they can't use that arbitration panel's opinion from the neighbor's case in their own case. So their arbitration panel, 
can come up with a different decision. They could rule in favor of the company. And again, that ruling can't be used in other cases. So now, again, this is in theory, you have 10,000 lawsuits filed. And the claim is, is that this is our example, that the company is cheating the landowner out of $3,000 a month, in, or I'm sorry, a year in royalty. Well, the company may win 50% and lose 50%, but they still won 50%, which means that they can continue that royalty calculation method for those 5,000 people. So again, think about this. Arbitrations, expensive and set no precedent. So of those 10,000, let's, again, we'll pretend we'll use some math here. Of those 10,000, let's say really only 5,000 bring lawsuits. And of those 5,000, let's pretend the company wins half of them in the arbitration. So that's 2,500. So now we had 5,000 people that didn't bring lawsuits. So that means the company in our theory is cheating 5,000 people. Then you have the other 5,000 who did bring lawsuits and the company won half of those or 2,500 cases. Well, 2,500 cases that they won plus the 5,000 people who didn't bring cases because of the arbitration provision in the lease. That's 7,500 people in our example that the company gets to, in our, again, example, cheat out of royalties. And 2,500 people went to arbitration, won, and now they are not getting cheated in our example. So a company, what did they have to lose? Cheat 10,000 people, and then at the end of the day, you can still get 7,500 people that you can continue to cheat because... 5,000 didn't even bring a case against you, and you won half of the other 5,000. So in this example, in this theory, the company now gets to continue to cheat 7,500 people versus paying properly 2,500. If there were a court case and the first person that went won the court case, that court case will be used as precedent in every other case. So if you won number one, 10,000 are probably going to fall right in line behind that. Company doesn't want that. Now do they? Heck no. Heck no. They don't want that. They want to, in my opinion, divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. You say, well, yeah, you know, whatever. You're just landowner guy. Uh, cherry picking things what are you talking about well, here i'm gonna we're gonna talk about this the next segment i'm gonna do and we're this isn't gonna be the whole show but next segment i'm gonna talk more about this and this this is fascinating to me so you may think all right well maybe you check uh, ch cherry picked from this chevron lease where it had really bad arbitration well i'm gonna read you or i'm gonna give you two other arbitration provisions from two other companies who are offering leases now in the mostly Potter County and I think some of Tioga. And it's, uh, we're going to talk about JKLM and Eclipse and what their arbitration or dispute language is. And so what we have here, what we were talking about last week and in this week, three active lease offers in Pennsylvania with arbitration language. And you're going to hear this. This language is becoming harsher and harsher and more and more obstacles and more and more problematic to the landowner. Why, why, why? Let's ask ourselves why. Is it because the company wants to further deter and stop you from bringing lawsuits? Is it? Is it because the company wants to set the stage that if they cheat you in royalties, in your opinion, you can't sue them? And we're going to talk about that. I think it's a, I think it's a very legitimate concerns, concern is super legitimate. All right. You're listening to all things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark law firm. Give us a call, learn about reviews, consultations, unitization, multi-unit well consents, shut in eight years or more vertical. Well, Tioga County. I want to hear from you. We'll talk more about that later. Again, you're listening to all things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark law firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station. And you can give us a call 570-307-0702. 570-307-0702. I'll be right back. 
Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember, you can always give us a call, 570-307-0702. Reviews, consultations, unitization. If you have a lease amendment, modification, modification of the pipeline agreement, put down the pen and pick up the phone. We have to stop signing these agreements. If you're given a modification amendment, if you're asked to sign a new map, you have to put down that pen. That may be a tremendous opportunity, or it may be notice to you that, hey, my lease, my pipeline agreement may have actually terminated. And people are signing amendments, modifications, and ratifications and reviving terminated leases when they have claims to seek a new lease in much better terms that has to stop if you're given a document lease modification amendment ratification ratification anything pipeline agreements whether you call me please call someone please call someone it's a shame to see people sign these documents when they're getting taken advantage of and don't know it. And that's the problem. So you're given one of those, do a review and consultation with me, do it with somebody who knows what the heck they're doing, but we can't be signing these agreements. We can't continue to allow hardworking. And I know this, listen, I believe this. We can't allow people like my grandparents, my parents, hardworking people who busted their butt on these farms and this property for so long to be taken advantage of this way. We got to stop it. So put that pen down. Call If you don't call me, call someone. But I'm telling you, it's driving me crazy. And I see it a lot in western Pennsylvania, which really kills me as an Armstrong County kid growing up in my area. And I see it in Armstrong County. I literally see it in Armstrong County and other places too. And it kills me. And so I hope the word gets out lease amendments, pipeline amendment, modification, and listen, ratification. Stop, stop, stop. Please get some help with that. Please do a review and consultation. I don't want to see people being taken advantage of. And look, I'd love for you to call me. I have a lot of confidence that I can help you. But if you don't call me, call somebody. But put that pen down, put it down, and get information. Same thing holds true for any document. But these ratifications are just deadly, in my opinion. Deadly. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. So I was talking last week about arbitration. Now, again, real quick, I'm going to just use royalties because it's the number one area that's a real potential problem. So here's the deal. Company puts in royalty language, which you most likely don't understand. No, and that's not to be offensive, but most people don't understand it. Even the land men typically, in my opinion, often don't understand it. The language is typically very convoluted and very complicated, and it's very, very hard to understand. And when you don't understand the practice of gas marketing and how these companies market and sell their gas, that's a problem when you're trying to interpret the language. And when the landman says, oh, yeah, that means no deductions. Or when you read, it says royalty without deductions. You, you can't rely on that. I'm telling you, you cannot rely on that. You can't. There's 10,000 plus people who thought they weren't getting deductions who are getting deductions. And that's not an exaggeration. There's easily 10,000 plus people out there. Don't be part of that group. Understand it. Understand it. So. My example is you're presented with a lease that has complicated royalty provisions. You may think you have no deductions. You don't know what the deductions are. You're told no deductions. You see the heading that says royalty without deductions. So you think you have that. Well, or you think you're going to get paid royalty based upon the price that the gas is sold in the open market, when in reality, you're going to end up getting paid royalty based upon the price that the company who produces the gas sells it to the affiliated company they own, or that the company is going to use an index price from a local market, not the price they sell the gas at, but an index price, and then take deductions from the index price. So those type of things occur. They're out there. And I'm telling you, they're out there all over, not just one case. They're everywhere. So 
you don't realize that. And later on, you say, hey, wait a second, I'm getting all these deductions. They're massive. It's eating up my royalty. And when I look at this, I have a contract that says, hey, you can't take deductions until my gas, will say, is ready for sale or use or marketable. Company says, well, no, no, your gas is ready at the wellhead. So therefore, we're allowed to take all the deductions we want. So you say, well, I disagree. That's not what this means. So I'm going to sue you. Well, remember, can you go into court, which is essentially free of pay a filing fee for your complaint and then go into court? Or do you have to go to arbitration where you have to pay a substantial filing fee and then pay for your own arbitrator and at least half of another arbitrator and then all other costs and expenses? Plus, you have to pay for your lawyer. Plus, you have to go on your own. So if you only have 10 acres, five acres, or even 50, chances are you're never even going to do it. So now you see you, in your mind you're getting taken advantage of and that your contract is being breached and they're not paying your royalty properly. So you say, okay, I'm going to sue them because this is, you know, this is a lot of money and this is wrong. It's wrong. It's not our deal. I was told this is how I'd be paid and it's not how I'd be, I'm going to be paid. Well, number one, I'm sorry, but you've made the mistake by relying on the landman the company representative who works for the company and not you, the landowner, immediately. And unfortunately, if you sign a lease and you didn't do a review and consultation or you didn't talk to an attorney who understands how these things are going to be calculated and explain it to you, I'm, I'm sorry, but you've made a mistake because you've exposed yourself to this. So part of the show is information to say, hey, we got to stop people from making these mistakes. Think about it. You know, call me, call somebody, but think about these things. So, now you look at your lease. So remember, I'm not going to beat this one up too well. Uh, I want to. So we look at our Chevron. Say we're leased to Chevron. We signed this lease that was pending now. And it says that, oh, before I can sue the company, I have to go to mandatory mediation, which is going to be very expensive. And it's non-binding, meaning that even if the mediator says, hey, landowner, you're totally correct. Here's what you should get. You win all 100% Grand Slam home run. Well, company can say, ah, we don't agree with that. Then, after mediation, which is expensive, you remember you paid for your lawyer to do mediation too. You paid for the mediator. Now, you got to go and you have to go to arbitration next. And it says here that you can't be a class member in arbitration. That's the other thing. Remember, expensive, no precedent. Arbitration is expensive. It doesn't set a precedent. And you have to go individually, meaning you can't group together with other people unless the company consents to that. And they're not going to generally. Why would they do that? They have a lot more money than you. Divide and conquer. So this says arbitration or mediation first. Then you got to go to arbitration as an individual. Then the arbitration in this case is in Allegheny County. Then you have to use the International Institute for Conflict Prevention and Resolution Rules. Then, in this case, this is beyond amazing to me. Also, with the Chevron lease, it says, and this is in arbitration, that the party should submit the documents that they consider relevant. And that neither party may compel the other to produce additional documents. I'm sorry. Neither party may compel the other to produce additional documents. So with Chevron, mediation, arbitration, each party decides what's relevant, and then you can't force them. Then you're also limited. The maximum number of witnesses each party may call to give evidence is three witnesses of fact and one expert witness. This is in your agreement. Oh, and then they can't award punitive damages. So if the company did something so egregious, so bad, that exposed them to these punitive or punishing damages, and the idea being to stop them from doing it again, we're going to issue punitive damage and punish you so you won't do it again. It's punishment. Well, this says, hey, can't do that. Can't do that. Why? Why is a company, why do you want to insulate and protect yourself from potential punitive damages, which are only awarded in extreme cases. Well, it must be because you're afraid that punitive damages may someday apply to you because you are going to act in such a way that is so egregious, so bad, that punitive damages, punishing damages would be awarded against you. But 
you seek to protect yourself by saying that the arbitrators can't award punitive damages. Think about that. Think about, I mean, think about that. And again, people are just signing. So now if you're getting cheated, if you're literally getting cheated and the company is breaching, you have to go to mediation, arbitration, deal with all those rules, hope you win, never set precedent for anyone else, and just spend a boatload of money. And you need to win. You might not win. Or you might not have a complete victory. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. So how about this then? Again, current offer pending now to people in, I believe this is in uh, Potter, maybe some in uh, Tioga also. This is Eclipse. So here we go. Uh, for the arbitration, this one says, and I'm just going to paraphrase that here, at least it's one arbitrator, but the person has to have at least 10 years of experience in the oil and gas industry. Well, let me tell you, aside from a few of us on the landowner side, most people with 10 years of experience in the oil and gas industry have been working for oil and gas companies. So it's no accident. Again, it's no accident whatsoever. In fact, it's smart. It's smart to say that if we're going to have an arbitrator, it has to be a person with 10 years or more oil and gas experience because they know very, 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 very few people are going to have that much experience and not be working for companies in the past or exclusively. And remember, you're, this can be, you know, these guys can be chosen from a list. So people like say me, I'm not on one of these lists. You know, I haven't been an arbitrator. I'm out battling for the people. So you're probably, probably going to get an arbitrator who's very company, probably very company friendly because they've worked in the industry for 10, a year more, 10 years or more. So that's stacked up against you. Now, again, there's more, but I just want to, that's, that's an example from Eclipse. Pending now, JKLM. This one, that, <laughs> this, this one requires that the arbitrators... Uh, the arbitrator, ar excuse me, the arbitrators shall determine the procedure to be used for arbitration and shall render their decision within 30 days after the appointment of the third arbitrator. The award shall be by unanimous decision. So if you appoint one and the company appoints and pays for their arbitrator, and then those two pick a third. What are the chances that the arbitrator that the company picked, who they're certainly paying big money to, what are the chances that that arbitrator is going to join a unanimous decision in your favor? What is, what is the chances? I mean, hey, in a you know, wonderful world, a fair world, everyone's going to do what's right. But what's the chances of that? And then if that arbitrator who the company picked who the company pays three, four, five, six hundred dollars an hour, and sometimes even more. If they don't roll in favor of the company, do you think that company will ever pick that arbitrator again? Do you think they'll ever pick an arbitrator who rolled against them in one case for another case? Probably not. Probably not. And again, look, I'm not saying that arbitrators are going to act inappropriately. And I'm not saying that arbitrators aren't going to follow the law and give you a fair ruling. I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm saying though, that personal bias, that, uh, potential conflicts when you're representing or not representing, but you're being paid, not representing, but being paid by one of the litigants that may influence you it may somewhere in the back of your mind. Now, look, some people may say there's no dang way in the world that a arbitrator paid 500 bucks an hour from a company is going to roll in my favor. Listen, I'm not going to offer an opinion on that, but there are a lot of people that think it, a lot of people that think it. So idea is imagine if you feel you're getting cheated on your royalties, cheated badly and the company, then when you go to look at your lease and you say, what do I do? And then you see, uh Oh, I got to go to mediation first. Uh Oh, then it's the arbitration can't be a class can't set precedent in my ruling. Then I realize how much it's going to cost for me to file an arbitration claim. Then I have to pay for an arbitrator and half of another arbitrator. Then maybe my 
arbitration provision says unanimous decision. Maybe it says that maybe one arbitrator, but that has to have 10 years oil and gas experience, which is almost certainly going to involve somebody who's been working for oil and gas companies for many years. Well, think about that. Not the way we want to have that deck stacked. We want it fair. Why, company, are you afraid to go to court? Why are you afraid to go to court? One more time. Why, company, are you afraid to go to court? Why are you afraid to be exposed to punitive punishing damages? Do you feel that you're going to act in a way that justifies you being punished with severe damages so you protect yourself now because you think that's a possibility? Ask yourself those questions. Ask yourself those questions. Watch out for arbitration clauses. Please watch out for arbitration clauses. Please, please, please. Because if anything, they are actually getting more aggressive in favor of the company. They're actually getting more aggressive in favor of the company. we got to stop this. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Give us a call. Learn about reviews, consultations, breaches, anything anything related to oil and gas, give us a call. See if we can help you. 570-307-0702. Regardless of your location, give us a call. See what we can do. See if we can help you. 570-307-0702. And as always, keep listening each and every week at this time on this station to all things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark. And I hear too, these commercials I hear are really, really good. So make sure you don't, you don't stray during the commercial. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember, you can join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. You can give the office a call, learn about reviews and consultations. Reminder, if you have a multi-unit well consent, a cross-unit well consent, I really encourage you to give us a call. Do a review and consultation. I really think you're going to find it very, very worth your while. I, I really encourage you. Also, if you're in Tioga County especially, and you're shut in for eight years or more, and you have, regardless of the type of well, but you're shut in, there's no royalty checks or anything, I really want to hear from you. And limited to this, I'm going to make this clear. If you're shut in for eight years or more, and if you have, I'd like to see at least 50 acres or more, I'll review your lease and your situation and let you know if I think that there's a claim and we can talk about, if you're interested, potentially pursuing a claim. I'll look at those and there'll be no charge to do that. Now, that's limited to this particular issue because we really need to stop this. We have to stop this situation. To me, it's outrageous that we have 150 plus wells that are in regulatory inactive status in Tioga County where they're just sitting there year after year after year and landowners are only getting, they're only getting shut in payments. There may be ways out depending upon your lease and your language and that's what we're looking at. So I really encourage you if you're in that situation, eight years or more, I really encourage you, give us a call, 570-307-0702. 570-307-0702. And again, multi-unit well, consents, everything, you know, oil and gas related. But those are just a couple real hot issues now that we got to do something about this. It's not right and it's not fair. And that matters to me. I mean, it may not matter to some people, but it really does matter to me. All right. Another thing, you know, another thing I want to just remind everybody, the radio show, I've been doing this show since 2010, all things Marcellus since 2010. Really encourage you, if you haven't gone to the websites recently, or if you've never gone, get there. Go to pagasleaseattorney.com, pagasleaseattorney.com. Go to pipelineattorney.com. Think about it. If you're presented with a pipeline agreement and you're not going to pipeline attorney, look at Frequently asked questions, common problems, leverage issues. Go there and use it as a resource. It's not specific advice, but it's a resource. Even if you never call, get information. The number one reason, 
that people sign bad agreements is a lack of quality information, specifically by somebody who's actually trying to help them, not try to help the company. I'm going to tell you, let's, let's, we'll present it as a, let's do it this way. Let's do a hypothetical. We'll, we'll do it this like a, imagine a scene. Let's just say this. Let's imagine a scene. So imagine that I have a client and my client says, well, I was contacted by a company and they want to meet with me to go over a certain contract that they're going to present to me. Imagine that I know what this is all about. And imagine I say to my client, well, we'll just, I'm not going to keep saying imagine. Just this is, we'll just pretend this is all imagination. Or, well, we'll just imagine this all. We'll put it that way. So client goes, I say, look, client, what I want you to do is, is just listen. Just listen. Don't agree to anything. As long as you listen and don't agree to anything, won't be any problems. Client goes to the meeting. Client is told in the meeting, given paperwork, the person in the meeting for the company doesn't know that I represent the client. Doesn't know that. Client hasn't told them. Goes to the meeting. During the meeting, the company representative gives the client a document that they, they want the client to sign. And of course, they also slide them a pen along with the document. And of course, they're also a notary, but gives them a document. And then without knowledge that I am the lawyer of this client, tells the client that this document that they are presenting has been used by Doug Clark, has been used by Doug Clark. So essentially saying to this person that this is Doug Clark's agreement. They have no idea that I represent this person. This is Doug Clark's agreement. So you should feel comfortable in signing it because it's Doug Clark's agreement. And he, uh, I guess the idea is, is and I, this is kind of good, I guess. Oh, that Doug Clark must be a good lawyer because they're saying that, hey, this is Doug Clark did this, so you should be comfortable with this. Having, again, no idea, no idea at all that I actually represent this person. So they say that this is language I've used. So then at the end of the meeting, the people say, we're not signing. Um, we're going to go, we're going to take this and we'll go and re re review it with our lawyer. Well, they say, of course, oh, well, who's your lawyer? And they say, Doug Clark. Now imagine if those documents or if the document wasn't the exact same document that I used in the past. Imagine that. Imagine what that feeling would have been to that company representative when the company representative says, oh, this is Doug Clark. This is his work. And here you can just sign this. It'll be like having Doug Clark's work and never talking to him. And then the person's saying, hey, my lawyer is Doug Clark. I'm going to take this to him. And imagine if that document wasn't the same thing that I've done in the past. Imagine that. So again, you know, this is all a hypothetical story, but it's something, let's just say, that could possibly occur. And then imagine that client brings me back that document and says, here's the deal, here's the story. And then I look at the document and I say, huh, that's not what I've been using in this particular scenario. That's not. So that's really an interesting scenario. Again, uh, this is all hypothetical, all hypothetical. But imagine that type of scenario. And I would, I'll just present this to you as something that could possibly occur. Could possibly occur. Then... I then go to the person again, hypothetically and say, <laughs> Hey, here's my request based upon what we've been doing in the past, uh, which is also different than what was provided, provided to the client. And ultimately we'll say that this, um, hypothetical example ends with the client signing much better documents than what was presented to the client during the meeting that was supposedly what I was using. So again, uh, it's just a hypothetical, but just imagine if that's true. And my point is, and I've heard this before, and I've heard this way too many times, and you as a landowner, as a gas right owner, should not and cannot buy this kind of statement. If a landman or a company representative says to you, well, this is what Mr. Smith signed, and Mr. Smith 
had a lawyer who negotiated this and was a really good lawyer and will give you, Mr. Jones, will give you the same deal that the other guy got to spend all this, Mr. Smith got to spend all the money in a lawyer. Well, a couple things. One is, who knows if that's true? Two is, who the heck knows if Mr. Smith's lawyer was any good? Who knows? He or she might have been terrible. And so now you set the bar at the worst agreement that somebody signed who had the worst possible lawyer. No, you can't fall for that. And if somebody says to you, oh, well, this is what Doug Clark used. And here, we'll give you that. This is what Doug Clark used. Well, how do you know that's what I used? And how do you know? And this is enormous. This is enormous. There are times where we totally lack leverage or where the client doesn't want to do certain things or doesn't want to push things and we totally lack leverage. So there are times that we enter into agreements that are not as aggressively friendly to the landowner because we had no leverage in that case. So a company then takes the worst leverage agreement we ever had. So when you have no leverage, like a well is going right to the, or a pipeline is going right to your well and we have no leverage. And so we just clean it up and we make it as tight as we can and we do it efficiently. So we're not running up expenses to do something, but we're making it as good as we can, but recognizing our limits. Then a company takes that addendum or agreement and presents it to a person who has complete and total leverage that can say no, that can negotiate every possible point, And they say, oh yeah, here's what Doug Clark used in an agreement. Yeah. Well, that agreement was a pipeline agreement right to a pad with no leverage. And let's say it was a hundred feet long versus thousands of feet on a, on a property that could say no or negotiate to maximize compensation in terms. But it's true to say, Hey, look, this is what Doug Clark used. In one example that may have been the worst agreement that a client ever entered into, not that it was a bad agreement for that case, but in general, when you have a line that's going 200 feet to a well pad and directly off the property, there's not a lot you can do because the lease allows it and the line's going right to the pad. But when that's not the case, you often have extensive leverage. But if a company says, well, hey, this is what Doug Clark used, and you buy that, and you buy that and you sign, you might have just left hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table and significant protections. We got to stop that. Again, and that's where a call, hey, they told me this is what you used. And we look at it and say, well, you know what? This is. Or you know what? No, this is garbage. Put the pen down, please, and pick up the phone. We got to stop that. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Keep listening each and every week at this time on this station. Give us a call. Learn about representation, reviews, consultations, shut-ins, multi-unit wells, amendments, modification, ratification. Give us a call. 570, regardless of location, 570-307-0702. 570-307-0702. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. And I want to remind everybody, you know, I talk a lot about the reviews and consultations. And I know that some people would say, gosh, there he goes again. But I, I have to keep saying it. I do them every week. They are so, so valuable. And they're a great introduction. If you don't like what you hear, we do a review and consultation. The worst thing that happens, you spend a couple hours typically. Worst thing that happens, and actually you spend less because I have to review the documents. That's on my own. Then we get on the phone. I do these by phone all the time. We do them in person as well. And really explain everything, what your options are, what your leverage is, and give you all the best information that I can. And it's, this is the specific information. As always, you know, the radio show is general information. We want to get you thinking. We want to educate everybody. We want to raise the bar. When we do, when I do these reviews and consultations, we're diving into your specific situation, your situation. What is your leverage? What are your options? Explain how does your royalty calculation work? Explain what the rights are. Explain what potential issues and you need to be aware of in the future. So you're not surprised. So worst case scenario, you get, a, I think, a really good education experience about these issues, and then you decide how to move forward. 
That's like the, I mean, that's literally, that's the worst case scenario. Best case scenario, you've realized that you could say no to the planned project. And then something that was stressing you out or you were worried about and you didn't want to agree to, you could just simply say no and you didn't think you could say no. So that's a really great situation. Or so let's say you're offered $20,000 and you think you have to say yes and you don't think you have leverage. Then you learn that you have all of this leverage and you can say no or you can negotiate and then you decide to negotiate and you enter an agreement for 100000 or 200000 whatever that number is. You know, so that happens in using these numbers generally, but many, many times in these negotiations or in these reviews and consultations, the person realizes the client, hey, wow, I didn't understand this or I didn't know this. So that's why I talk about these things because they really are. When we, we want to get this bar raised, then I want to get you a specific advice to help you regardless of your location. So that's why I talk about them so much. They have just been a wonderful you know, service that we've come up with based upon this need. And I'm telling you, if you have a document, call the office. If you like what you hear, we'll do a review and consultation. Again, I do them all myself. I'll study the documents. And I assure you, I study the documents. And then we get on the phone or you can come in and I answer your questions. I tell you what I think you need to know. I tell you what problems we see with these types of agreements and what you need to be aware of. And I just really encourage you, really encourage you to do that. Multi-unit well consents. If you're not doing that, you're making a big mistake in my opinion. Also, if you have a lease amendment modification and ratification or a pipeline agreement, they want to put in another pipeline and they want you to sign something, wow, do I encourage you to give us a call. I really, really do. 570-307-0702. And I want to talk briefly to my friends in Tioga County. I touched on it earlier. If you are shut in, if you are shut in and there are thousands of people in that position, you're shut in and you're getting royalty check year after year after year, if you're shut in for eight years or more, and if you have over 50 acres or any amount of acres and you have the well pad on your property, I will look at your lease, look at your situation, the drilling history without charge and talk to you about whether you have a potential claim and whether I would be interested and if you'd be interested in me, bringing a claim on your behalf. That's the one area that I'll look at this and we'll study it and we'll, we'll get a plan together and see if we can help you. So there's no serve, there's no charge for that. That's an evaluation. It's free. So again, that's limited to, I just want to be clear that that's limited to these shutting cases, Tioga County specifically with shell Sweppy. We got to stop that. So I really want to find the right cases to bring to make sure that we put an end to this for everybody. You know, we need to do this, but for you and your situation, and there are a lot of different leases out there. There's Allegheny, there's Webco, there's Chesapeake, there's East, and there is Sweppy, and many others. So there's a lot of different issues and a lot of nuance and a lot of tricks in these leases. And so I'm looking at these all the time. So I want to hear from you. If you're in that situation, I want to hear from you. I want to see if we can help you. And again, it's always your decision on what you want to do always your decision and what you want to do. So I'll listen, I'm up against it already, but you've listened to all things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I'm really tight. Call 570-307-0702. That's 570-307-0702. And remember, put the pen down and pick up the phone. Give us a call 570-307-0702. The land man works for the company, not you, the landowner. Let's stop signing bad agreements and keep listening to all things Marcellus. I'll see you next week. Have a great week, everyone.